Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutzy Gaming, and a video covering off my full league start plan for the next league, and it's going to go from Act 1 to farming my preferred content in Tier 16 maps. The video is going to go into detail about the steps I plan to take, but for those that prefer reading, there's a Google Doc linked in the video description. Um, so let's not waste more time, let's jump straight in. So as people know, the build I'm planning to run is a Lightning Strike Raider, but leveling with Spectral Helix. There is an Atlas Passive Tree Planner in the Google Doc, but it doesn't have all the new nodes on there yet, so that's going to be changed. So if we start with step one, just going to level through the first five acts as quickly as possible. Going to totally ignore learning the league mechanic, but it looks like you can basically just use the Sentinels as you go through the zones anyway. So I may as well do that because it should be free loot um, and shouldn't slow down the leveling. If it turns out the mechanic's overtuned and it juices mobs up too much, then I'll just leave it. So it's on to Act 6 where the strategy starts taking place. Um, so as soon as you pick up your first lot of rogue markers uh, in Act 6, it will be on Twilight Strand. Travel to the Rogue Harbour, complete the intro quest, and buy any lot picking and demolition contracts from Wakano. And then from here on in, every time that I level up, I'm going to go back to the Rogue Harbour and again buy lot picking and demolition contracts. If I run out of chance orbs, I'll just trade um, jewelers in for chance orbs, uh, sorry, for fusions, and then these fusions into chance orbs. I'm going to make this currency back later on anyway, and I want to buy as many contracts as I can. So I'm going to level through the campaign as normal and just pick up any heist chests that I come across and make sure I pick up any rogue markers. So as I carry on, again, every time I level, I'm going to go to Rogue Harbor. I'm going to buy these contracts. I'm going to get to Act 10, I'm going to kill Valenta, and then get the last skill point in that act, and then I'm going to leave it for there. I'm not going to progress and kill Katava. If I can, I'm going to do Third Lab if I'm strong enough. Then going to go to Rogue Harbor and start running all the lock picking and demolition contracts that I've built up. The plan is to start with the easiest ones and actually complete these all the way through so that we can build up a supply of rogue markers because I don't want to have to do the ones later on that are level 68 where they get more difficult. I want to just loot them without setting off the alarm and then leave as soon as the alarm's about to go off. Now, this isn't a new strategy, it's been done by loads of players league after league. Uh, the reason we're going for demolition contracts is they only have miscellaneous chests in them and these chests drop raw chaos all the time. With this strategy it's possible to farm 2 to 3x in a couple of hours to then buy the gear needed to get the character red map viable. I had a quick practice run um, on a dead eye that I had so it wasn't quite range of speed but it wasn't too bad um, and after the two hours I had about 140 chaos worth of stuff that would instantly sell and that was including 80 raw chaos that dropped and that was in about two hours of heisting. That's the first time I've ever done it, so I was pretty suboptimal. There was lots of stuff I would change after doing it the first time. Um, I, overkill, I definitely overkilled mobs. Uh, I made a few mistakes when I thought I could get out in time, and I couldn't, and I ended up stuck behind doors. So I think I could easily improve it, especially being on a ranger um, going on slaw. I think I could definitely get that up to 200 chaos pretty easily. All I want to do is spend enough time in highs to just get a couple of bits of gear so that I can then really get my character up to tier 14 t16 maps nice and quick i want to do it this way because i don't want to have to worry as i'm unlocking my atlas about making currency and where's my next gear upgrade going to come from the idea is that i buy the gear when i leave the rogue harbor so that my character is now basically ready to just zoom through all of the map tiers now if you're super quick with this strategy um, and you do it all on day one really early the gear you want might not be available or might be really expensive as i'm in the uk League starts 9 p.m. So I plan to get to heist on day one, then go to bed, and then when I start heisting, it's going to be about 12 hours into the league. By the time I leave heist, it's going to be a good 14 hours um, after league start. Loads of people play for like 14 to 20 hours um, on day one. So there should be a good selection of stuff on the market for me to buy. It obviously still is day one, so it's going to be expensive. But if that's what I have to do to get my character um, to red maps nice and early, then that's what I've got to do. Um, so once I've finished my heisting, I've got my character geared. I'm going to kill Katava, get the last skill points, and then basically just start rushing Atlas completion. So the next step, the goal is to get all of the essence nodes first, then expedition. Then I'm going to use the blocking mechanics that are now coming into the Atlas tree to give essences and expedition as much chance to spawn as possible. Now I've seen some guides floating around, and it looks like it's possible to get either 100% or close to 100% chance for an extra essence to spawn which means if we use the map device as well, which I think is 2C, we can get five essences per map, which is pretty insane. 
and it's around 40 completion will give me all the essence nodes. I think it's 35. Um, so it's something I should be able to unlock really quick and want to get into maps. Once I've got the essence nodes, I should be about mid tier yellow maps. So I'm then going to complete Uber Lab as soon as I get uh, a fragment to be able to do it because it should be a breeze. If at that stage a character is able to farm T14, I'm then going to go and go and kill the pinnacle bosses. If they're not able to farm those, I'm going to upgrade some more gear. The way I'm going to do that is I should now have between 45 to 55 white or low tier yellow maps that I'm never going to use. They're just going to sit in my stash because I've outgrown them for XP gain. What I'm going to do is speed farm these maps targeting only essences. So I'm just going to go in the map, find the essence, kill the monster, get out the map. If the boss is on the way, I'll kill it. Other than that, I'm not interested in anything other than looting the essences. So including maps that I pick up along the way, I should easily be able to do 60 maps in 60 minutes, sell all those essences, and that should give me the currency I need just to make the last few upgrades to get my character going. So to say, if I need to do that, I will. If not, I'll just move on to the next step. And that's really that it's viable. I'm going to go and kill all the pinnacle bosses to get the first two voice stones. Still need to remember to pick up essences and complete expeditions. My plan for expedition is I'm not going to run the log books because I don't think I'm particularly good at them and I've probably not got time to learn the ins and outs of it before the league starts. So I'll sell the log books, but I will use rog currency to 100% craft gear both for myself and to sell. For gear I'm selling, I'm just going to concentrate on armor evasion bases, try and get some really good spell suppression gear and get that sold. Tusion, I'm definitely going to keep the reroll sort and use them. They're really, really good source um, of currency. For Gwenin, I had a really bad experience with Gwenin last league. I think I got to about six, 7,000 Astragalus without anything good. So this league, Gwenin is getting sold. They're probably not going to be worth much early on. If they're only like worth one or two C, I'll just keep them until people get to the point where they start Gwenin gambling and then they'll kind of triple in value so I can get them sold. If Essences end up being decent money, I'm also going to be paying for it on the map device in every single map. And that covers off kind of that step. It's get the bosses down and get some more currency found. Next step that we've got two void stones, it's time to basically go and get the Atlas completion done as much as I can. So then at the end of it, I'll have all the expedition nodes, some map nodes for now until I get on my void stones, essence nodes, and I'm then going to spec all my additional points into delirium since the character should be able to handle Delhi mirrors fairly quickly. So it's at this stage, I'm going to need to push my character progression to sort of boss kill him because I want to get Maven down because I need three void stones to even start the next part of the strategy. So I'm going to target Maven as I find it an easier felt, uh, fight than Uber Elder, and it's also cheaper to get into. As I said, all the log books are going to get sold. Expedition currency I'm going to use and I'm just going to upgrade the character as much as I can. The items I'll be looking for at this point are a Blizzard Crown, which might be out of reach. A taming ring and then a lethal pride jewel. I'm essentially going to do anything I can to boost my DPS up enough to kill Maven in six portals. I don't care if I use all six portals, I just want to get Maven down to get that third void stone. So now we've got to this point, the next step is going to be delirium farming. Now, this is not going to be the most profitable strategy at endgame, but I love doing daily maps, so that's why I'm going into this strategy. Now, there's going to be a warning flash up on the screen because there's two caveats to this. One is that I'm either going to be forcing Delhi every map with either the map device or a charge compass, whatever's cheaper, or relying on a natural spawn that will be about 33%. So at league start, once I get to this point, I need to look at how much a simulacrum is going for and what's the cheapest combination of scabs I can get to use. And would it matter if I just use them naturally and wait for Delhi's to spawn? They're the two things I really need to look at before deciding if this strategy is viable. Now, the more important one is that Delhi farming when I'm streaming bricks my PC and bricks my stream. So if I'm still streaming at this point regularly, then it's likely that I'm going to have to try uh, a different strategy, which might be just um, speed mapping, selling boss maps, fragments, that sort of thing, and adding in like anything that juices maps like Harvey strong boxes and just going full on mapping. Um, but the plan is to go Delirium because I really, really like that content. But as I said, take it with an air of caution because it's all going to vary and depend about how much scarabs are, how much Simulac can sell for, and how much my character can actually do this content. Once I've got that third void stone, that allows me to set Tropical Islands as my favorite map, and it will also be T16. 
I'm then going to unlock as many favorite map slots as I can and take the passive that increases the drop chance for your favorite map but turns the other maps to currency because I'm only interested in running tropical islands. I'm not going to spec into sextant nodes as there's only one sextant I'm after and I'm hopefully going to be able to buy it from trade. Tropical Islands is an awesome map for deli farming. I did it a few leagues ago and it was last in the rotation. We've also got the fact that you can now get multiple um, influences on a map so it should add even more mobs to the maps. It's going to make them really difficult so I need to really pay attention to whether it's, it's working that well with the character or whether I need to upgrade it further. But hopefully by the end of it, I'll be swimming in Deli Orbs, Cluster Jewels and Simulacrum Splinters. And it's at this time the fun begins really and the farming can start. So I'll just talk a bit about the Delhi strategy. And it is tough. Delhi maps are difficult, especially when you've got all the nodes, because it makes it tougher the further away from the start you get. If it turns out to be too tax inducing it, then I'll just run it out and go. I'm going to do expeditions and essences constantly. Uh, and I'll be selling everything I can to upgrade my character. So you can guarantee Delhi mirrors by buying charged compasses, but we should have a natural chance of about 33% to spawn one. And these compasses are normally mega expensive, so they're not something I'm going to look to buy. Um, the sextant mod I'm going to look to try and get my hands on is the one where Vile skills don't have a cooldown. So I can essentially spam Vile lightning strike through the maps. And that makes even maps that my character wouldn't be able to do doable because we've just got insane DPS. If they're too expensive, I'll have to go on without them. If I get expedition encounters in a Delhi map, I don't know whether to ignore them or not. They take a bit of time. They're a bit awkward to do, and they do get really difficult because you've got all the expedition mobs spawning, and you'll have all your influence mobs spawning, and you're going to have the Delhi monsters spawning as well. Um, so it might be too tough. If they are, I'm going to not do expeditions if they come in a Delhi mirror map. In terms of what I'm going to run with the map, I'm going to use Breach Scarabs, whatever works out the cheapest one to use. I'm going to use Rusted, Elder, or Shaper Frags because they can now combine um, with the other influences. I'm going to use Cartographers just to make sure I can keep my map supply up. And then I'm going to use Legion. I'm then going to use either Eater or Exarch influence on the map. So these maps are going to be super juiced, super full of monsters. And if I can get through them, I should be looking at sort of 200, 250 splinters a map if I do the strategy properly also going to be putting alva atlas missions on whenever i've got any because again they add mobs to the map which means you can get your splinter count up definitely 100 going to run a cast on the portal setup as if i die which i probably will quite a lot i don't plan to level up once i've got to this strategy um, but if you die in a delhi mirror then your portal gets you straight back into where you were and you just carry on uh, where you left off I'd say if I find it too difficult, I'll tone the content back until it's at a stage that I'm happy with. Um, but I really like running Delhi, so that's going to be my aim for sort of the first week of the league. So I just quickly want to run through uh, from the last time I did this strategy how you complete the Delhi maps. Because of all the Atlas nodes we take, the fog goes a lot slower and the character is really quick and it is possible to outrun the fog. So if you do a similar strategy to this and you suddenly notice a timer turn up, you're probably not behind the fog, you're probably ahead of it, so you might need to backtrack and slow down a little bit. For Breach, if you stay within the Breach, the Delhi timer pauses, so you can complete these in full without worrying about the fog catching up with you as long as you stay within the Breach. Now this is one of the things that often makes you outrun the fog, is if you get a Breach at the beginning, you kill them all, you then get a Breach straight away again, you stay and you kill them all, the fog's going to be paused that whole time and you're going to then run off, and you're really, really likely to outrun the fog. Uh, for Alva, as I said, this just gives more kills, more rewards, and more splinters. But if these spawn towards the end of the map, they can be super, super difficult and really, really deadly. We also need to take into consideration the new rare modifiers on monsters, because that could make this strategy almost impossible. So if I get to this stage and I can see that the rare mobs are stupidly overtuned, and if I get the wrong combination, I'm doomed, I might have to rethink the strategy, but this is what I plan to go for. Essences, again, killing essence monsters adds to the deli timer, um, so it helps that we've got these passive nodes. Now, if I can do this content and it stays profitable, I'm probably going to do this for a week or two. I want to earn as much currency as possible so that I can then either gear a new character or get this other character geared and ready to try and take on uh, the uber bosses. If it turns out, it's a really too difficult strategy for week one, or it's not that profitable, then I need to look at what else I want to do. 
there's only really a couple of additional thoughts um what i was thinking about for the league start strategy and that's i I don't plan on taking that many map nodes before i've got essences or expedition i plan to go all the essences all the expedition then take some map nodes and then delhi if i'm really struggling with map sustain i'll rush essences then go map nodes then go expedition then delhi now there's also going to be new and wonderful ways that people figure out how to make money around the lead mechanic so i'm going to be keeping an eye out on videos and and reddit if i have to um forums discords things like that just to see if people have got some really good strategies that you can add into your current strategy to make even more currency so the last thing to note is i've started playing around with the better trading uh web plugin and i've put a code within the document and it will be in the video description which has just got five or six searches that i plan to use to get my lightning strike gear and um, feel free to use them as well they're nothing particularly groundbreaking they're just things for like a claw a shield uh, a dps ring an amulet and then there's a couple of live searches for stuff like tribal fury anointed on a corrupted amulet and corrupted six link with five of the six colors that i need because although there are specific gems that are better for the build there's seven or eight different gems we can use as long as we use the core gems um, that make the build tick um, so that's it for this video uh, i'm sure there'll be another video out before league start but probably once we've got all the information um, about the league also plan on tweaking my filters making them just a bit better because they are very bare bones they just give you claws they make noises when transmutes drop and stuff in leveling so i want to get them just a little bit better and i also need to get a filter set up for when i'm doing deli maps because at the moment the standard filters don't really suit what i want so i'm going to have to really look at what i want to show on filters and what i don't to make sure i'm not slowing down the map too much um, that's it for this video um hope people found it useful not saying you should go along with this strategy because it could backfire in the Delhi section, but before that, it's rock solid um, and it's definitely a way you can make guaranteed currency. Uh, so, as always, thank you very much for watching the video. Take care and see you in the next one.